Hi, my name is Ray Fierstein, and I have had two near-death experiences in my life. I am 70 years old now, and my first one was when I was five. I decided to play Demolition Derby with my sister's dollhouse, and I was told by my mother and my sister, who were pretty upset about it, to go out back and clean it up. So I did. And it was like late September, early October, where it was about six o'clock at night, and it was pretty dimly lit. So we had to put the porch light on. I went about my business and cleaned it up. And I went to come back inside and I reached for the door handle and there was a black wasp inside the handle. It came out and bit me behind my, my right ear. If anybody knows, I'm not allergic to bees. I'm allergic to wasp and hornet venom. There are different venoms. And the black wasp is the worst of the two. So, you know, I hit it, killed it, it dropped out on the ground. And I walked inside to go and tell my mother and my sister were in the living room. And all of a sudden there was this astonished look on their face of shock. And my sister explained to me that I looked like the Michelin tire boy. I was that blown up. I had an inflect shock and I was going into septus. So my father was away, he worked for GE, he was away. And so he called my godfather. My godfather came over and he called a police officer to come over, pick me up and bring me to the hospital. And they had scooped me up, brought me in the back. I was in the back of the patrol car. And the last thing I remember the officer saying was, would you like to have the lights and siren on? I said, yeah, and I died. It took about five minutes or eight minutes to get to the hospital. They had actually pronounced me dead in the emergency room. They couldn't revive me. They packed me with ice to bring down the edema and actually put in epinephrine to bring the swelling down and try to restart my heart. And I guess it didn't happen. So from there, I remember being in this, it was like a tornado, a gray black tornado, no noise, no whooshing, none of that. I was sitting on top of it. So you can imagine riding on the top, hanging onto the rim of it, just riding around. And I rode into this room I, I'm thinking it's a room, but it was an area that was pitch black with dots, white dots, very crisp white dots, like overhead spotlight showing down on the floor. And there was people inside it. And those people were little children and about my age. And I, I tooled up in this, you know, my hot rod tornado and sat there. And there's, I remember there was two little boys and a girl. And the boys, they were dressed nice. But I remember the girl very distinctly. She had a golden blonde hair, blue ribbon, and she had a sundress on that was like a cream color with blue flowers that were later told to me after I described them as forget-me-nots, uh, a ruffled collar and black patent leather shoes and matching socks. And she looked up at me. She says, hi, why don't you come down and play with us? There was voices with me all the time. And these voices are so nice. They were comforting and they were gentle and kind. Um, and just soothing. It was very nice. Nothing forbidding about it. Nothing evil. Nothing, you know, that scared me. I wasn't afraid at all. I was just kind of like swimming around. And they said, no, you can't go down there. And I said, oh, okay. And she says, well, then here, take one of the puppies. So I reached down to grab a puppy. And as soon as I did, I had this tremendous jolt. It didn't hurt. It was just like a very intense vibration. And I was back in the hospital and a sheet was over my head and they were there were people talking. I didn't, I don't remember what they were saying. It didn't matter because I took my hands and I flopped the covers down and I said, where's my mommy and daddy? And the shock it scared the doctor and the nurse and they screeched. And that was it with that one. At five years old, I didn't really have much of a world to reflect on. So it wasn't, you know, I didn't see God. I didn't see Jesus. I didn't see, I didn't see anything other than these little kids. And there were people standing around these spots of light. I could see them, but couldn't see them. I could see them, but couldn't see them. I knew they were there, but there was nothing evil or nothing negative that I could feel. I just, it was great. So that was the first one. And nobody really asked me about it, but I remember as if it happened yesterday. The second one, I was about 16 or 17. I was going to prom and uh, I had gotten sick that Saturday before. I had a stomach ache and, you know, it was a fever. And my father was treating it with Pepto-Bismol, tomato juice and ginger ale. You don't ask me why, but it must have been some kind of a, a remedy years ago. I don't remember what it tasted like, but it sounds god awful. Anyhow, uh, I didn't get any better. and My temperature started rising, so he took me to the doctor. The doctor's name was Dr. Casella. I'll never forget. He's like an old country doctor. He looked at me and he goes, get him to the hospital. He's got appendicitis. I was going jaundice where my liver was shutting down. So they got me to the hospital and I'm laying in the bed waiting to get an operating room to go to get surgery. And all of a sudden, all the pain went away. I felt 
to the prom now. I feel great. You know, you tell the doctor I can get out of here. And she go and he goes, wait a minute. So he gets the nurse. Nurse comes in. No, you're not. Your, your appendix just burst. We have to get you in before you go septic. And with that, they were wheeling me and I passed out and they told me that I died right on the table. And they got me in, did surgery obviously, and I woke up. But in between there, this time, there was a very bright, 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 bright light. Washed out everything. The light was very bright. It was so bright, but it wasn't bright that it hurt your eyes. It was just very, very white and very, very clear. And as I moved, and I felt like I was walking. And there was people on either side of me talking to me and reassuring me and telling me everything's going to be all right. And it was the same voices. And I was hard to believe, but I recognized them. And they were very nice. And a few psychics had told me that it was probably my guardian angels or my spirit guides or whatever. It didn't matter. They were very, very nice, very calming. And as I'm walking, images started to come into focus. And it was like all in pastels. And it was people just hanging around, talking to each other, smiling, laughing, saying hi to me as I'm walking by. And, and as we're walking, these people on either side of me, like guiding me, a woman started approaching me. I would say she was in her 50s. And it was like 30s, 40s hairstyle with a white dress and gown on and a pendant around her neck with a blue stone in it. And she walked up, she says, hi, Ray, how are you? And I went, oh, pretty good, I guess. It's very nice here. And she goes, oh, yeah, it is very nice. She goes, my name is Rose. I'm your grandma mother your mother's mother and i went oh, oh nice to meet you i never met you before you passed away uh you know before i was born and she goes yeah and you go, well it's good to see you it's nice to meet you and it was so funny because it was like a oh oh well you know you passed away you know nice conversation and uh oh uh, you know it's good to see you now and all that and she goes listen she says you can't stay you have something else that you have to do so please tell your mom that you met me and i said to say hello and everything is fine and also tell her that tommy is good he's doing well i said okay okay and at that, I actually went back and I woke up in the uh, emergency room, a recovery room, and, you know, went home. I was there for two weeks in the hospital because of it. And I had tubes hanging out of me. It was a mess. And then I had a, about two weeks convalescence at home. And during that time, my mother said to me, she goes, well, Ray, she goes, did anything interesting happen in the hospital? I said, yeah, I had my appendix out. I, I guess I died. And she goes, oh, other than that. And I went, well, I don't know what you mean. She's, well, when you're sleeping, you keep saying this name, Rose. I went, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. By the way, I met a lady said she was your mom and her name was Rose and she's my grandmother. And I described it to her. And I mean, my mother started going white. You know, she was like, really? And I go, yeah, she said, oh, she went to tell you, she says, tell your mother that everything is fine here and Tommy is doing well. And I thought she was going to fall over. And she's just looking at me with her mouth agape. And all of a sudden I said, oh, yeah. And by the way, she had this blue stone pendant. And she got up, ran upstairs, come back down, and she handed me that pendant. It was her mom's, and it was given to her before she passed away. And I said, oh, who is this Tommy? And she goes, that was her brother. And I went, what brother? I know Butch was my older brother, Joe. And she goes, no, you had another older brother that died before you were born. And I went, no kidding. I said, well, I guess he's doing well over there. And that was the end of that. And all the time between my five-year-old and my 17-year-old, things would happen. I would hear things. I would see things. Our home was very occupied with other than worldly entities. We had ghosts, you know, spirits in the house, and they became even more active after that time. After those the last one, I, I have to tell you that I've never really been afraid of death. Death is just a word. I think the word itself has more meaning than the actual act of dying. People that are having health issues that are terminal, I would not worry about passing over. There's a life after life, and it's a good one. As far as I could see, it's a happy one. And I wouldn't, I'm not going to tell anybody to go seek it out if you're not you're not ill or anything, but just know that don't be afraid of it. It's just nothing to be afraid of. Uh, more to be afraid of in life than there is in death, like taxes. I would say to anybody that it had helped me be open to about anything. It helped me to understand what that other side is and what I have to look forward to, I guess you would say. And don't carry a guilt with you.
Uh, there's no such thing as guilt over there. I didn't feel it. It was like being inside a bubble of joy and happiness and love. It was very, very nice. And I hope that whatever I've said is going to help anyone in the process. But I would say just live your life as best you can. And then hopefully you'll have a good life after life.